Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this film, it's our second film in our series on how to build a spring and then how to put that spring into an assembly so that the spring becomes manipulated as the assembly moves. Uh, I like to show you how to uh, put together a spring in a little bit simpler format than what we've done here and then in incorporate that into an assembly. But first I want to show you how to fix this uh, spiral that we put together. One of the options when you're putting together a helix is you have the ability to create a spiral. And when we did that spiral, our profile of our, um, you know, the profile of our spring, you know, the quarter inch profile, uh, which is going to define the thickness of the spring, kind of got goofed up a little bit. So let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, what we want to do is we want to go into the profile, right click on it, and uh, change some parameters here. The, the only thing that's really defining this thing is this Pierce relationship. But as you know, that uh, this plane is intersecting the helix or the spiral here in a number of different locations and uh, it's kind of arbitrary sometimes which location or which uh, intersection uh, line that uh, our cell works is going to choose in order to make that Pierce relationship. So what you need to do, it's difficult to do this with the spiral to be able to select the, the helix uh, in the user interface so, but we can do this out in uh, the future manager tree so if you select it here it still isn't apparent that we've selected it but if you scroll your mouse in and out it shows it turning light blue, which means we have selected it. And then we can click the center of that circle and then apply that Pierce relationship. And um, as you can see, it uh, kind of has a mind of its own and went all the way over here. Not really quite what we're looking for. Sometimes it'll go in the middle uh, or just pick an arbitrary uh, intersection of that line in order to do that. But uh, again, we could do that. If it doesn't work this time, then we want to make sure we don't select that plane too. So helix, center of the circle, control key depressed. Let's do a Pierce, and it puts it right back there too. So Control Z, let's put it over here. And I notice that if we turn the, the orientation here a little bit, it defines it a little bit better. So again, Helix, center of that circle, Pierce, and now it goes to that side. So once we do that and we go to go to rebuild, then it follows the full path of that Helix, and not just a portion of it. So it goes all the way from the front to the back, from the very beginning to the very end, and that works out pretty well. So. What I'd like to show you now is how to put together a spring in a different uh, way. What we're not going to be doing is a helix, but we're just going to go right into uh, into a sweep feature and show you how that works. So let me go ahead and change our drawings here. What I've done is I've created three different sketches on uh, two different planes. Uh, we have sketch one, which is going to be the circle on the top plane, uh, the two-inch circle, which is going to defi define uh, you know the mean radius or the mean diameter of our spring. Uh, sketch two is going to be a vertical line with a dimension on it of 8 inches, at least for now it does. And then sketch 3 is going to be our profile. That profile will follow in a normal direction up that path as we define our Fiat Helix. Let's go into sketch 2 and let's uh, click on that dimension right now. It's uh, the dimension is driven where we're going to make it a driving dimension. And uh, what we want to do with that uh, dimension is to, well, we want to make it driven. So uh, what we're going to do, uh, when you do make it driven, by the way, and if we rebuild that as it was before, uh, you can stretch that dimension out. You, uh, you, know, you can stretch that line out and the dimension follows suit with it. What we want to do is get it uh, so it's somewhere close to about 8 inches. It doesn't have to be exact, but we want to have a, a profile that looks, uh, or when the fi spring finally comes together, we want something that looks uh, fairly close. To what we really want our spring to be in its uh, in its rest state, which is going to be eight inches long, a uh, quarter inch in, in the profile with a half inch pitch. So let's go do this. Sweep loss space. We're going to click uh, select your profile, which is going to be that sketch. Down here, our path, which is going to be this. Uh, this has to be a solid line, a sketch line rather than a construction geometry, rather than a construction line or a center line. And then once you get those two uh, selected, then you can go into options. So what we want to do with the options here is we want to do uh, twist along path. And we don't want to define it by degrees, but we want to define it by turns. So if you remember the amount of turns that we had uh, with a quarter inch of profile, half inch pitch, there should be eight turns all together. So let's see if that, uh, how that looks. So that adds up to eight. And uh, actually 16 turns would be better, and that would uh, better define that. So with a quarter inch profile, quarter inch between, there's a socket between those two of a half an inch, and that actually works out pretty well. So that's pretty close to what we want. Uh, and then just green check mark, 
and now we have our uh, spring. Now if we take this line and we stretch that line, uh, the spring comes with it. And if we bring that line back down, uh, the spring should come with it too. It should rebuild itself a little bit quicker than that. And once we get that uh, mated uh, correctly inside of an assembly, then everything should come together correctly. So that's what I want to show you with this film. Go ahead and save your file. We'll pick this up in the assembly in the next film. We're going to do our SARS mechanism. And I'll show you how this all goes together.